Okay, in this video, we're going to be doing Calc BC problem set number two. Uh, link to the problems and playlist are in the description below. Let's check it out. Number one, the differential equation shown above has a particular solution y equals f of x with f of zero equals one. Find the particular solution, which just means solve the differential equation. Uh, one year, one of my best students came back from the AP exam and said they didn't know what that meant and it like broke my heart. Make sure you know. Solving a particular solution just means, you know, or finding a particular solution to just solve the differential equation. All right, this one looks like it's gonna be separation of variables, so I'm gonna kind of color code it, just rewrite it. Uh, everything with an X I've made purple, everything with a Y I made that kind of bluish green teal color. I don't really know what color that is. Uh, so we're gonna separate. So dy over y minus three is gonna be eight X dx. Uh, we're gonna throw some integral signs in here and we integrate the left side, that's gonna be a natural log, absolute value of y minus three. And then on the right-hand side, we're just gonna get four x squared plus c. So c goes on the side with the independent variable, which in this case is x. That's the thing that's in like the kind of denominator of dy dx, I guess. Whatever variable you see there will be the independent variable. Um, so what I do is if y is inside a natural log, I exponentiate before I solve for y. That kind of avoids the error or, or the potential error of having to deal with that absolute value. Um, so I'm just gonna rewrite this thing and say it's y minus three is c e to the four x squared. I have several videos on how to do that. Um, check them out if you're not sure what I did there, but I highly recommend if y is inside the natural log, exponentiate before you solve for c. Now we're gonna solve for c by using uh, the fact that f of zero is one. So we would get uh, one minus three is negative two equals c e to the zero. So c is just negative two. And then we go back to the step where we, uh, you know, first encountered, not first encountered, after we exponentiated, we have this and this. Uh, so y is gonna be three and then uh, minus two e to the four x squared. Um, so what I did was I moved three to the other side because you do wanna get isolate y because you're looking for y equals f of x. Sometimes I rewrite at the end just f of x equals, but I think since y is equal to f of x, this is good. Uh, let's take a look at the next question. So we have to evaluate uh, the integral one over four x squared plus 12 x plus 18 dx. All right, so my first thought on these always is complete the square. Even though in Calc BC, you kind of have like an equal chance of it being uh, complete the square to get an arctan type thing or a factor to get partial fractions. I always think it's gonna be arctan because in AB, uh, you never get partial fractions. So uh, I'm gonna to try to complete the square. So I'm gonna take a four out of four X squared plus 12 X. I'm just gonna kind of leave 18 on its own. So I'll have this four, the quantity X squared plus three X and then 18 over by itself. The coefficient of X is three, divide that by two, that's three halves. Square that, that's nine fourths. I'm gonna add and subtract nine fourths. So we have this. So now we kind of have our perfect square. Uh, so it's gonna be four and then the quantity x plus three halves squared. And then when you distribute the four to the negative nine fourths, you get negative nine and then plus 18. So we have four, the quantity x plus three halves squared and then plus nine. All right, so that's actually what the denominator can be written as. So let's rewrite our integral. So it looks like this. I've also put the nine first because I just have arctan's derivative memorized as one over one plus u squared. Um, and I recommend you do that too. Like that, having that one in that position in the at, at the beginning of the denominator makes a lot of things easier, especially in Calc BC when you run into something called geometric series, if you haven't run into them yet. It's related to arctan in some way. Kind of memorize the form, it'll help you long term. Uh, all right, I'm gonna divide everything I see by nine so that I do have that one in the bottom left position. Uh, so I'll get one ninth and then uh, one. And then we have four quantity squared over nine. But I know that that's all u squared, so I'm just gonna write it as uh, the quantity two x plus three halves to the first over three and then square the whole quantity dx. Uh, all right, so now this is like a pretty typical arctan situation. I'm gonna take out the one ninth uh, and then, uh, so from here we have u is two thirds the quantity x plus three halves. So uh, there should be a two thirds in the numerator. You know, when you find du, there should be a two thirds. So two thirds in the numerator three halves 
comes out to balance it out, so three halves, and then you're perfect. So you just get arctan of u. Uh, I'm gonna distribute the two. So we have two quantity x plus three halves. I'm gonna write that as two x plus three over three, and then plus c. And then uh, we do wanna like simplify this, I guess. So we would get one sixth arctan of two x plus three over three, and then plus c. I have a lot of videos on doing the arctan stuff. I actually really like doing it. I do them like mostly in my head because I've done a million of them. Um, and you just wanna practice a lot until it's kind of like second nature. All right, let's take a look at the next problem. So this has two parts. Um, we're gonna evaluate each of the following. So the integral of x squared e to the x. I look at that and I think this is definitely integration by parts. Um, so I'm gonna do a table method. I think I do my table slightly different from how a lot of people do their table, um, but I'm gonna go through it here. So I think if there's a polynomial involved, I almost always let that equal u. Choose u so that the derivatives go to zero eventually. And a key thing is you have to choose dv so that you can actually integrate it, right? So I can integrate e to the x. So I'm gonna say u is x squared because the derivatives eventually go to zero. I'm gonna say dv is e to the x. All right, my table is u, v, and then the sine. So uh, for the u column, you're taking derivatives all the way down. So it starts at u, and then the derivative is 2x, the derivative is two. The next derivative would be zero, so it's not gonna contribute anything. Um, now for the v column, we have dv, but we're gonna start off by putting v down, right? So we're gonna integrate dv, integrate e to the x dx, I always forget to write that. Um, the integral of e to the x dx is e to the x, so that's this e to the x. And then we get the integral of e to the x is e to the x, the integral of e to the x is e to the x. So it's kind of an annoying example for that reason. Um, and now the sine column always goes minus plus, minus plus, it'll just, it starts at minus and alternates. All right, so to write this down, our integral, x squared e to the x dx, is gonna be just multiply the u and the v and then put the sign. So it's x squared e to the x and then minus. Now our next term, multiply 2x e to the x. And then the, the sign between the two terms, the next term will be plus and then 2e to the x. And then there's nothing else, so it'd be plus c. Uh, so that's how I always do it. It's pretty quick. I recommend it for sure. Table method, good way to do these. Uh, let's take a look at the next one and see how it's different. I mean, they look very similar, but like a little bit different. So we have x cubed e to the x squared. There's sort of an issue here where, I mean, you could try to do the same thing where u is x cubed and then dv is e to the x squared dx. The problem is you can't integrate e to the x squared dx. So what I'm gonna do is a common thing to do I think this is a little beyond the scope of what the AP exam would ask you to do, but I think it's well within what a class would ask you to do or should be within. Um, I'm gonna separate x cubed into x squared times x and then e to the x squared. The reason I'm doing that is that I can integrate x e to the x squared. And so that can be my dv. So I'm gonna say that u is equal to x squared, that dv is x e to the x squared dx. And then I'm gonna find du and I'm gonna find v. I'm not doing a table on this because I don't think we need it. Du is gonna be 2x dx. V is gonna be, so there should be a two by the chain rule, it should be 2x e to the x squared. So there should be a two, so a one half e to the x squared. Uh, now I'm gonna write down my integral again. So this integral is uv, which is gonna be one half x squared e to the x squared and then minus the integral of v du. Um, so the two from du and the one half from v cancel, so that's why there's no number, no coefficient there. Um, so we just get x e to the x squared. All right, that we can integrate. So this will be the thing that we already have, which is one half x squared e to the x squared. Um, and then there should have been a two in front because it should be two x e to the x squared. Um, so a two goes on the inside, a one half comes out, so we get minus one half e to the x squared plus c. There you go. All right, uh, so good example. Again, I think b is a little too hard for the bc exam, but I think it's totally fair for an in-class assessment. Um, let's take a look at number four. Given that f of three is one, f of five is eight, and the integral from three to five of f of x dx is eight as well. I don't know why I did that. Uh, find uh, the integral from three to five of x, f prime of x dx. I like these problems. 
They're pretty common. I'm gonna like color code it to get us started. Um, so we're doing this. Uh, integration by parts, I think is the only way to go. So u is gonna be x, dv will be f prime of x dx. Crucially, we can integrate f prime of x dx. We don't even need to know what f is, right? We just go for it. So du is dx. V is just gonna be f of x. So now we just like write down our integration by parts. It's gonna be uv, so x, f of x. And we're evaluating that from three to five, fundamental theorem. And then minus the integral of uh, v du, which is just f of x dx from three to five. Now that would be a problem if we didn't know what it was, but we're just told what that is. So we don't have to worry about it. Um, so here, five f of five minus three f of three and then minus the value of that integral, which we were told was eight, so minus eight. Uh, now we have to fill these in, so it's gonna be five. F of five is also eight for some reason, uh, minus three, and then F of three is one, uh, and then minus eight. So that's 40 minus 11, which is 29. All right, that's the entire problem set. I hope this was helpful, and good luck.